Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Monday. It is, um, it is Dallas Cowboys. I need a defensive coordinator week. And the Dallas Cowboys are set to meet Ron Rivera. Wink Martindale, as well as Mike Zimmer uh, for their coaching positions. We all have heard all this. Cowboys are doing their internal interviews, and um, we already know that uh, Joe Witt, who was going to be one of the internal ones, we're going to uh, be meeting today, but he won't be because he's now the defensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders. Say what you will about the Commanders. I don't know if it's going to work for them or not, but they are definitely making moves and trying to get better. Hiring Cliff Kingsbury uh, signals, at least to me, that they are trying to get uh, Clab Williams uh, to be their quarterback. They may have to trade up and give a little bit more compensation to the Bears to prevent somebody else from jumping up in front of them to get to him. So we'll see how that shakes out. In the meantime, the question that you have to ask is, who are we going to have for a defensive coordinator? Now, Jerry Jones has been saying, been quoted as saying, he wants a big splash. We've been hearing Jerry use a lot of adjectives this off season that, you know, we're going all in, you know, this year, we're not going to be worried about the cap or anything like that. We want to make a big splash in hiring our, our defensive coordinator. And I don't know. I honestly don't know what would be a big splash anymore. Um, I'm going to say for my personal opinion, um, I can't say that I honestly know any of the individuals and we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But for me, of the names that we've been hearing, now there's also people like Pete Carroll, who would be the similar type of a defense that you're in. I don't know if Pete Carroll wants to be a assistant coach and a defensive coordinator at 71. There's Mike Vrabel, who is a younger. He would definitely be the youngest candidate, which we have not heard anything about there. I think those would be definitely major surprises. I would say Bill Belichick would be a big splash. It might even be a big thud because there's no way in my mind that any of those three candidates want to be the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. Now, you could say that basically this could be the coach in waiting for the Cowboys. But why would you, if you're Bill Belichick, say, okay, let me go work for the Cowboys and prove myself for a year to see if Mike McCarthy fails, and then maybe I can get that job? Does that make any sense at all? Don't think it does. Not a little bit. If you're Bill Belichick, you already have a resume of seven Super Bowls. You can just sit back and wait for anybody to start being on the hot seat, and that way you take over complete control as soon as they fail and the season is over. You get an extra year to kind of recharge your, your batteries to get going. So I don't see that one happening. As far as Ron Rivera, Ron Rivera, part of the 85 Bears, got a Super Bowl ring, was the head coach for the Washington Commanders. And when I look at Ron Rivera, and maybe it was just that he was with the commanders and the situation was just that bad. I mean, we see how bad the stadium is. We know how bad of an owner Dan Snyder is. He had his mansion that's been for sale for over a year in a hot real estate market and can't sell that sucker. But it seems like Ron Rivera just looked like he was so defeated that he had no spark, no passion, no fire. That's not to say that he doesn't have a great scheme or great vision and everything else. I mean, we saw Dan Quinn be with the Atlanta Falcons, have the biggest meltdown, 28-3, up 28-3, and lose, do an outstanding job for our Cowboys that were completely underwater. I just don't see Ron Rivera at his age, and just I, I just don't see him relating as well to say a Micah Parsons and what needs to be done on this defense. I could be completely wrong. That's just this is just my personal opinion. 
Uh, Wink Markendale. Now, Wink had did some great things to defensive coordinators with the Ravens for four years. He's been a linebacker position coach um, for years and things, has tons of experience, is a real mind out there. Although, again, looking at the body language, looking at him on the sidelines with the Giants, I didn't see... A lot that just kind of sparks me, that kind of inspires me. Again, I'm just going by the feel that I get from the coaches from the outside. Now, then there's Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer is kind of like, to me, the ones that the Cowboys would hire for a couple of reasons. The first reason being is the Cowboys are familiar with you. And that is the thing that Jerry Jones wants to have is people that he's comfortable with, that he knows what to expect more than anything else. And Mike Zimmer being a guy, and this is the other reason why I look at this and say, yeah, he would definitely be interested in this because he's seen multiple turnovers with the Cowboys. He was there with Barry Switzer when he got fired. He was there with Chan Gailey when he got fired. He was there with... um, Ah, God. Can't remember. I keep trying to forget the five and 11 seasons together. But he's been there and he's been a consistent working with the defense. And I will say that he's had some incredible defenses with the Minnesota Vikings. And I think about him having a generational talent in Micah Parsons and getting D backs like Deron Bland, maybe Stefan Gilmore if they bring him back, and Diggs if he's 100% as a starting point on here. And that I believe, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that Mike Zimmer would probably be able to work sooner with Jerry Jones on what he needs. Because I would believe that Jerry Jones, being familiar with him, having had him on his staff before, would say, I trust you. I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to ask me and so forth kind of things and say, I believe in you because of the familiarity. I don't know if you hire Ron Rivera, who to me just looks like, you know, a deer in the headlights there. He looks like a lot of times that he was ready for a Southwest commercial where do you want to get away? Because it looked like he was just ready. He just looked just numb, like nothing would shock him and that there was just no fire. It's just like, I, I'm just here. Uh, was he in a trance? I don't know, because that's what it looked like. Maybe it was like, get out, you know? He's like, just, I, that's just the impression I got. And that's why I think that Mike Zimmer might be a good candidate and a good fit because if Jerry Jones, and we all know that Mike McCarthy is a lame duck, okay? And it's kind of crazy when you think about a team that's gone 12 and 5 three years in a row. I'd understand if it was 5 and 11 three years in a row or 8 and 8 three years in a row that you want to get rid of them. But you have to, instead of the Cowboys looking solely at Mike McCarthy as the problem in the same way some fans just look and say Dak Prescott is the problem. You need to look at this whole thing holistically with the whole team and the Joneses need to look at themselves and say, did we do enough to put them in a position to be able to succeed? And that's the thing that I think is lost, that people just want to be able to point to one person and say, your fault. And the easy thing is, is to just get rid of that guy and think that all of a sudden everything's going to be hunky-dory. That's not the case. You can get rid of Mike McCarthy and bring in somebody else, but bringing in somebody else means you're starting all over. Bringing in somebody else means now, you know, you've got a new vision that's going to take time to go ahead and, and, and redo. To me... To me, before you blow something up, and this may be because this is the kind of person that I am, um, I remember the second house that I bought um, to redo. And this was before it was cool to be into flipping and things and all that. 
But I remember this house was a Pentecostal church at the turn of the century. So this house was, at the time we bought it, 100 years old. And it had a real steep roof on it. And it was in such bad shape that the roof line sagged and it looked like a saddle. It was so bad that when you went in, they had actually mounted the kitchen cabinets. They were like going downhill because the whole house went downhill. And when I bought the house, everybody said, great, I'm glad you bought this house. You're going to bulldoze it over and build a new one, right? I said, no, I'm going to save it. Remember my father-in-law, every time he came over to look and see how we were doing, he would shake his head like, look at this freaking idiot. I can't believe my daughter married this guy that thinks he's going to save this. We ended up fixing it. We ended up selling it, making a big profit. House is still standing here 15 years later and still looks good. So instead of blowing something up and starting all over, how about we go ahead and say, let's see if we can fix what's here. You got the foundation. You got some good bones here. You got a quarterback. You got a, you know, a generational linebacker. You got a tight end that's, that's, that's definitely stepping up. You got a hell of a receiver. You got a couple of really good offensive linemen, you know, between uh, Zach Martin and, and Tyler Smith. You've got some good cornerbacks. Why don't we go ahead and do a little remodeling here and adding some more substance to the team and trying to go with it? Everybody's always ready to tear shit down and kick something to the curve. I'm one of those guys that believe.